Hello friends, this video on digestion and absorption part 20 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. With this we have reached towards the end of this lesson. So let us look at some of the questions just to see if you got this lesson well or not. So let us look at question number one. It says gastric juice contains pepsin lipase and renin or trypsin lipase and renin, trypsin pepsin and lipase or trypsin pepsin and renin. So gastric juice. So which part of the body gastric juice gets secreted from? So gastric juice is secreted from stomach. Exactly. In stomach, what happens? Mostly digestion of proteins and fats take place. Right? So, which particular enzyme helps in the digestion of proteins? Pepsin. Right. So, pepsin, lipase and the renin. Renin is something which is used for digestion of milk and this is present only in case of infants. So, pepsin, lipase and renin are present in gastric juice. So trypsin is not at all present in the gastric juice. Trypsin is something which comes from the pancreas. So any option with trypsin would not be the correct option. Question number two. Succus entericus is the name given to a junction between ileum and large intestine, intestinal juice, swelling in the gut, appendix, succus entericus. So this is another name for intestinal juice. And what is intestinal juice? It contains all the intestinal enzymes like the chymotrypsin, trypsin, carboxypeptidase, all those enzymes are a part of this. Now the junction between ileum and large intestine, what was that? That was ileocecal valve, correct. What do you mean by swelling of gut? That is a disease, I mean that is a disorder you can say. Appendix again, that is just an extension of the large intestine, the vermiform appendix. So that is also not the right answer. Question number three, match column one with column two. Let us see what's there in column one and what's there in column two. Okay, so we have these many things. Bilirubin and biliverdin. So what are these? These are the bile pigments, the yellow color pigments. So A will match with two, the bile pigments. Hydrolysis of starch. Which enzyme helps in this hydrolysis of starch? Hydrolysis of starch is nothing but conversion of starch into disaccharides or monosaccharides. So amylases are the enzymes for digestion of starch. Digestion of fat. Which enzyme helps? Lipase. Salivary gland. There are three pairs of salivary gland. Parotid, maxi maxillary and submandibular and the sublingual. So parotid is an example of salivary gland. Let us look at the next question. Answer briefly. Why are villi present in the intestine and not in the stomach? Quite simple, right? Because intestine is the one which is involved in the process of absorption. And for absorption, greater the surface area, better the absorption. Right? Now presence of villi increases the effective surface area. So that is why it's intestine have villi but it is not there in the stomach because stomach is not involved in the process of absorption. How does pepsinogen change into its active form? Now pepsinogen is released by the gastric juice in stomach. So pepsinogen is an inactive form. So it is made active by the action of hydrochloric acid. So when pepsinogen is acted upon by hydrochloric acid, the medium becomes acidic and in acidic medium it gets converted into pepsin which is the active form and pepsin helps in the digestion of proteins by converting proteins, the complex protein structures into proteoses or peptones. What are the basic layers of the wall of alimentary canal? We already discussed there are four layers. The outermost layer is the serosa. The next layer is the muscularis which has two layers of smooth muscle cells that is the circular layer and the cylindrical layer. The third one is submucosa and the last one that is the innermost layer is the mucosa. This innermost layer has most of the glands which secrete the enzymes. For example, in stomach as well as intestine, the intestinal glands 
and the gastric glands they are all located in the mucosal epithelium layer similarly in intestine for absorption purpose the villi are also present in the mucosal epithelial layer how does bile help in the digestion of fats now as we all know bile does not contain any enzyme so bile helps in breaking down bigger globules of fat into smaller globules and that process is known as emulsification of fats and it so that is one purpose which it does the another thing which it does it it activates the enzyme lipase which is an enzyme which is responsible for digestion of fats so that means bile help in the digestion of fats even though bile itself does not contain any enzyme for fat digestion so let us look at question number 5 it says bile juice contains no digestive enzymes yet it is important for digestion why now as we know that of course this is true that the bile juice does not have any digestive enzyme but then this bile juice helps in emulsification of fats that is it breaks down bigger globules of fat that is bigger globules are broken down into small smaller globules so that means it helps in the process of digestion so that now the smaller globules will be there so that when the uh, fat digesting enzymes it will be easier for the fat digesting enzyme to digest these fat molecules and also it helps to activate the enzyme lipase and lipase is responsible for digestion of fats so these are the two uh, advantages another advantage which we can also count is that it makes the medium alkaline bile juice makes it alkaline now as we know the food or the chyme enters the small intestine from the stomach now when it comes from the small uh, stomach it is uh, it is highly acidic in nature so that you may need something alkaline in order to compensate or in order to balance that acidic uh, nature of chyme so for that bile juice makes the environment alkaline so these are some of the contributions of bile juice which makes it very important for digestion even though it does not contain any digestive enzymes the next question describe the digestive role of chymotrypsin which two other enzymes of the same category are secreted by its source gland now first of all chymotrypsin which is the source gland for chymotrypsin it is secreted from pancreas so chymotrypsin is present in the pancreatic juice so what is the role of chymotrypsin so basically pancreas secretes chymotrypsinogen so chymotrypsinogen which is inactive whichever is secreted by pancreas at that time it is inactive now this chymotrypsinogen in presence of the intestinal enzymes turn active and it is converted into chymotrypsin so chymotrypsin is an active enzyme and this chymotrypsin helps in digestion of proteins so it helps in digestion of proteins so what it does it converts proteins into peptides that is how it helps chymotrypsin now any other enzymes which are secreted from pancreas of similar type of enzymes which help in digestion of proteins exactly one enzyme which would be trypsin trypsin is also formed from trypsinogen which is secreted by pancreas and another enzyme would be carboxypeptidase so this carboxypeptidase is also formed from procarboxypeptidase which is secreted by pancreas question number 7 how are polysaccharides and disaccharides digested okay so if you talk about the entire digestive process of poly and disaccharides the digestion starts from mouth so that this digestion occurs in different parts of the alimentary canal if you talk about mouth and buccal cavity almost 30% of the starch gets converted into disaccharides here that is the polysaccharides get converted to disaccharides so in mouth or in the oral cavity so poly gets converted into disaccharides in presence of the enzyme salivary amylase 
Next, it reaches stomach, but not much of digestion take place in stomach for polysaccharides and disaccharides because in stomach the digestion take place for proteins and fats. Not much difference to the poly and disaccharides. However, there is again a major digestion activity which takes place in the small intestine. Here the disaccharides, these disaccharides are also broken down to monosaccharides. The polysaccharides are also broken down into di and then to monosaccharides. So somewhat like this, the disaccharides, for example, all polysaccharides will get converted to disaccharides here also by the presence of the enzyme amylase. And the disaccharides also get converted into monosaccharides in presence of the intestinal enzymes like lactase, maltase and sucrase. So that way is maltose gets converted in presence of maltase into glucose and glucose. Similarly lactose gets converted in presence of lactase into glucose and galactose. Again sucrose get converted into glucose and fructose. So this happens in presence of sucrase. So these enzymes maltase, lactase and sucrase they are all intestinal enzymes. So this is how the process of digestion takes place in the body. Question number 8. What would happen if HCL were not secreted in the stomach? Now as we know in stomach the digestive enzymes are secreted by the gastric glands in the form of gastric juices. So now these gastric glands actually secretes an enzyme called pepsinogen which is inactive. Now in order to make the pepsinogen active an acidic medium is required. So HCL provides that acidic medium. So in presence of HCL pepsinogen gets converted into pepsin and pepsin helps in the digestion of proteins. Now if HCL would have not been there in that case the medium would have not turned acidic and pepsinogen would have not been converted into pepsin and digestion of proteins would have not been taken place. So no digestion of proteins would have taken place in stomach without HCL because the inactive pepsinogen gets converted into active pepsin in presence of the strong hydrochloric acid. So this was inactive and this was active. Let us look at question number 9. How does butter in your food get digested and absorbed in the body? Now what is butter? Butter is nothing but fats. Butter contains a lot of fats. So basically the question is here, how are fats digested and absorbed in the body? Now the process of fat digestion really does not take place in the oral cavity because nothing happens there. It all starts in the stomach. And then some, that too in the stomach also a little bit of digestion take place because small amount of lipase is secreted by the gastric enzymes. So most of the fat digestion take place in the intestine in presence of the pancreatic enzyme lipase. So bile secreted from liver helps in emulsification of fats. So it breaks down fats into smaller molecules and also activates the enzyme lipase. And these lipase converts fats into di or triglycerides which are further broken down to form fatty acids, acids and glycerol. So these fatty acids and glycerol, they are the simplest absorbable form of fats. And this is how they are uh, digested. So the digestion is over. And how are they absorbed? They are absorbed in the common process like the intestine with the help of villi. So it is an active process that is active transport takes place. They are absorbed through the villi of the intestinal mucosa. Mucosa is the innermost layer of the epithelium. Last question of this lesson. What are the functions of liver? Now as I mentioned before, liver even though it is a not an active part of the digestive tract, but it plays a very important role in the process of digestion by secreting bile. So the first function of a liver would be the production of a bile which in turn helps in the digestion of fats. Liver is also a site for amino acid synthesis and you can understand how important amino acids are because they are the building blocks of proteins 
and proteins are like the building blocks of almost everything inside a living body. So inside the cell, if you see, most of the cell organelles and parts of the cell are made up of proteins. It is, plays an important role in lipid metabolism by helping in emulsification and also by activating the enzyme lipase. It is a site for RBC production during fetus development. Now when a, a baby is in the womb, that is when the zygote develops into the embryo and then the embryo gradually develops, the fetus development take place inside a woman's womb. During that time, the red blood cells start to get produced in the liver. So liver is the site where red blood cell production starts during fetal development. So these are some of the important functions of liver. So with this, we have reached towards the end of this lesson and I hope that this lesson on digestion and absorption would have helped you. Uh, so see you all in the next lesson. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.